So this is Paul Woods at Twistle Stick. Meet Kevin Doherty, um, Client Services Director of Fitch. Hi Kevin, how are you? I'm very good Paul, how are you? I'm, this I'm week then Spurs <laughs> can no longer overtake Arsenal. It's a bad week for you. It's not a good week for football, is it? No. Uh, let's, not, let's move on. Moving swiftly on. <laughs> um, can you give us a quick summary of your career to date? Yeah, so I started off uh, at uh, GGT Direct, so a direct marketing yep. agency. I wanted to get into agencies and, and uh, that facilitated me getting into agencies. Uh, worked in a couple of DM agencies, one of which was Limbo, which was uh, BBH's uh, below the line, and that then got merged into, into BBH proper, and I ended up doing above the line. Um, and I, I really enjoyed that, uh, but I always felt I always wanted to do what I thought was what I called integrated marketing. Yeah. And uh, uh, eventually, I was, I was sitting with somebody who, who said to me, "You say you talk about integrated marketing, but you you you're a brand person." Okay. And I kind of put the seed of thought in my head, and uh, eventually, I, I made the move over to brand agencies so, and um, into Fitch. And how long have you been here now? Uh, be six years in August. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, <laughs> tell us about tell us about Fitch then. So Fitch is a brand design consultancy. Uh, it's been over 42 odd years. Uh, we're best known for the work we do in, in retail design, so we work yeah. with uh, brands like Carbon Warehouse um, and Vodafone. But we also do a lot of brand identity work um, that probably we're not as famous for, but it, you know, it's, it makes up about 47 of our business. Okay. Um, I know you're involved with the Shooting Star Chase charity. Can you tell us a little bit about your role there? How you got involved? Yeah. So, Shooting Star Chase is a children's hospice. Um, for life-limited children. Uh, fortunately, my wife and I had a personal experience uh, of Shooting Star Chase. So I had a couple of months off work, um, and when we got back to work, I was chatting to my MD and yeah. the creative director, and they said they would like to do something for the charity if there's something we could do pro bono. Uh, I phoned up, and as it happened, they were going through a merger, and they uh, long-term were thinking about doing a new identity, a new brand, possibly even a new name. Yeah. And uh, that's how we got involved. Um, that was two or three years ago. Uh, we worked with them ever since and it launched uh, in February this year. Great. And what's your role there? You're one of them. So, uh, so my role really was, was the introduction. Uh, yeah. Off the back of that, I've, I've also become a trustee. So cool. uh, on, on, the, on the board of governors of the charity. Moving on to any career advice um, that sort of stands out to you. What's the, is there, what would you say is the best piece of career advice you've been given? Uh, that you've probably used and plagiarised and used as your own. Yeah, <laughs> I think three things. Um, one is more sort of a holistic sort of thing, so be yourself. I think yeah. if you try to put a mask on at work, try to be someone different, it isn't going to work for you. I think just be yourself. I think you'll enjoy it more, and if you enjoy it more, you'll, you'll do better. Yeah. And then two sort of, sort of sound bites that I tend to use, and maybe this is a client services thing, but um, assume nothing. Yeah. And manage expectations. If you do those two things, you can't go far wrong. Yeah. Um, inspiration. Um, in terms of the most inspirational person or someone who stands out to you as being inspiring, um, either you've worked with or worked for in the past, um, anyone who sort of stands out to you? Yeah. I think we're pretty lucky in this industry that we are surrounded by inspirational mm. people. Um, but, so I was having a good think about this one, and I, I, there's a, it's actually a client many okay. years ago. Yeah. Uh, a guy called Stuart Kenny, and he okay. worked for a, a an Irish bookmaker that at the time no one had heard of called Paddy Power. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I was asked to go to a new business meeting. It was the day after our agency party. Everyone was sort of hanging. And <laughs> I, the new business guy went, I've got a new, I've got a new business meeting, and I, I need a, I need a suit to come in with me. So I sort of reluctantly went in, and we were all thinking, who are these guys? And Stuart walked into the room and he just pointed out every piece of work that I did. And I was at BBH at the time that there was a really, really stand out piece of work. I went, I want to do that. I want to do it for betting. Everybody thinks betting is about the odds and it's not. It's about having fun. People bet to have fun. If they have a bet on something, they enjoy it more. Yeah. And it, it, was, it was interesting because we walked out wanting to work with these guys, but also we worked out with the piece of insight that we'd have spent weeks trying to find straight from his yeah. mouth and we played that back to him in the meeting and we showed him the, 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 the leap, the creative leap that came straight off of that and he actually said to us we, we won the pitch within the first two minutes. We could have stopped really? there and it was done. 
great. Um, so, I mean, on, on, on similar lines, I suppose, in terms of the biggest or best creative brief you've had a chance to work on throughout your career? Uh, it's been a, been a few, but we, we have one recently, we're working with Adidas. And, yeah. Uh, so we worked on the Adidas World Cup uh, campaign. Great, yeah. And uh, so, the, so the big all agency sort of briefing, and uh, the, the client walks in the room and he goes, this is the World Cup. <laughs> this is the World Cup in Brazil. This is Adidas in the World Cup in Brazil. This is the biggest thing you're ever going to work on. So at that moment, it's kind of like, one bit of you is kind of going, yeah. The other bit of you is, oh, oh dear. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is a bit scary. Yeah. It's, yeah, I mean, that's seemingly the biggest thing I've ever done. It's a great thing to work on. Um, in terms of um, the industry itself, so if you could summarise it um, in terms of how you feel about the sort of current state of the creative industry. Um, um, I think it's in a really interesting place. I think it's uh, it's gone through so much change and, and flux, and I think it still it's still working it out. You know, people kind of everyone rush to digital, then now yeah. to rushing to social, then everyone's rushing to content. And I think the industry is still trying to work out where it's evolving to, yeah. uh, and everyone's trying to steal each other's lunch. From my perspective, I, I I think it's about brands that should be that are strong, and consistent. They are the ones that will survive. So I think my mantra to, to, to clients would always, always go back to your brand. If you can be strong and consistent, mm. you'll see out the, the dips and uh, the waves and you'll, you'll, have, you'll have that presence. If you could speak to a younger, younger Kevin, um, sitting down, giving some good words of advice, what would you, what would you say to him? Uh, I think I'd have changed what I'd have done as a degree okay. in economics. Okay. I think I'd have probably done history would have been better. I think I'd okay. enjoyed it more. I think, you know, again, it goes back to do something you enjoy. I think I'd have said, I, I went travelling before my degree. And yeah. I wish I'd done a year afterwards as well, because there's okay. no rush. Yeah. There's no rush. And I just said, go teaching for a year. Do, do a teaching as English as a foreign language. Because I think you learn to, you've got an unruly mob in front of you who are difficult yeah. to manage. Yeah. So you learn to manage these people, you learn authority. Uh, and you learn to project, and I think there's an awful lot of things you can learn as a teacher that you can then take on into your career. Just like running the client services team. Like right? Running the clients, <laughs> right? Running the clients. Yeah. <laughs> um, inspiration, you always sort of touched on. Um, so, in terms of some things, things that inspire you or things you've seen recently or heard, um, what particularly jumps out at you that's really inspired you recently? I am going to be shameless here. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> the work we did for Shooting Star Chase yeah. um, is incredibly powerful. Um, okay. The story behind it is, uh, if, you, if you talk about a children's hospice for, for life limited people, you, yeah. you, the reason people are there is it's sad. Yeah. But actually what happens there is, ha is, is a very joyful place, a very happy place. If you go and spend time there, um, children are having fun, there's a lot of laughter. And trying to capture that, that essence and get that across it is, uh, it's, it's a really difficult thing to do, but we've managed it, and also be sympathetic to, to, to the, the, the reality of, of what it is. And I think we managed to do that. I think the, the, the most, the loveliest bit for me was when we launched it, and the feedback that we got from the people who work there. And it's humbling to go and see these people work there, what they yeah. do, and what they bring to people's life. But for them to be as emotional as they were when we showed them the work, and to have said to us, that we captured it perfectly um, was Amazing. absolutely yeah. fabulous. And if you haven't seen it, go to the website. Right. <laughs> um, if you were in the industry um, and you could have picked a different career or a different route, what, what do you think you'd be doing? Um, it's, it's, a, it's a really difficult question. <laughs> you know, I, had to, I had to think really long and hard about this. And there's two answers. Yeah. One is, I'm not sure I would do anything else. Okay. Uh, and the reason being is it took me so much time to try and think of something else I would do. Yeah. I, I'm basing this on the, on the reality that I couldn't be a professional sportsman because I'm not actually good enough. <laughs> um, and I'd love to be a professional sportsman. If I, if I was really pushed in and said that you had to change career, I'd probably go back and do something in sports and I'd probably do sports psychology. Really? Okay. Um, I think what we do is you know, the psychology and what we do. Yeah. And uh, you know, I love I love watching sports. I love 
looking at the tactics and the strategy and the structure of sports and, and how that all works. And I think something involved with sports, maybe sports psychology, would have been a really fascinating area to get into. So we spoke about brands, we've talked about brands, or interesting brands you've worked with in the past. If you could work with an, one that you haven't already worked on, yeah. is there any that you'd go, I'd love to get my teeth into that one? Honest answer to this is I don't think there is a specific brand that okay. I go, I really want to work on. I think, I find brands that come in that are either new, yeah. either there's a new brand, a new sector, yeah. or trying to reinvent themselves. And I think those from, from I, I, I love the intellectual challenge of, of, of launching a brand, launching a sector, um, changing a sector. I love that intellectual challenge. And I think sometimes you can be a bit blinded by, I'd love to work on that brand, and when they, they, that brand comes in, it, it can be quite hard work. Uh, when that client comes in, it turns out that they, they talk about um, a revolutionary brief, but then you have to keep this, this, and this, and you don't want to change that, that, and that, and actually it's basically a little tweak. Uh, and I think some of the best briefs that I've ever worked on, Paddy Power would be an example of those, were, were things that I would never have dreamt of particularly wanting to touch. Yeah. And then they come in and actually, you know, some of the driest briefs can be really, really interesting, I think. Design and find financial services quite interesting because there isn't a product there. Yeah. So you, it's all about working out what the brand is and how it should, um, should behave and express itself because that, that is the brand. Funniest or most awkward pitch that you can remember being involved in? So the creative director here at Fiction, we, we had to apply for a, a pitch in Spain, uh, in Madrid, yeah. Yeah. a hype sign. Uh, for a telecoms uh, company, and we, we flew into Madrid. And we fly into Madrid. There's a mountains you come over, and uh, everything was fine. As you come in the mountains, the plane starts, like that, and I'm kind of sitting there. I'm like, oh, it's fine. And a couple of minutes later, I'm like, I'm feeling a little bit, a little bit, a little bit tardy, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit sickly. A little bit later, there's a couple of beads of sweat. A little bit later sweating everywhere, feeling really ill. Eventually we land, walk off the plane, the creative director was a few seats behind me and I'm really wobbly and I'm sort of standing on the, by the gate. And he walks out, he looks worse than I do. Really? <laughs> we, we, managed to, we managed to get to the, we, we get out of the, uh, of the airport and we, we give ourselves 20 minutes to try and just stop feeling ill, <laughs> eat something just to try and line ourselves up, <laughs> drink some water, yeah. get into a taxi, drive to the office, we're in the only air, non-air conditioned taxi in Madrid in <laughs> yeah. the height of summer. And as we get to the office, we must have gone around about 10 roundabouts. <laughs> so all of a sudden, the travel sickness we both had was back. So we arrived there, we've got 10 minutes before we go into the presentation. We're, having, we're standing outside, trying to suck in air to try and feel better. We then walk into the pitch, and we were in a room. I mean, it was a room designed for about 10 people, and there must be 15, 20 people in there. <laughs> They'd been in there for three or four hours. There was no windows. Oh my God. Because they'd been having the pictures come in and out. And so we then had to walk into this room and it was, uh, I mean, it was, it, yeah, it was, it was people there for four hours in this tiny crowded room, really? hot, muggy. Yeah. So we started presenting, the, the, both of us feeling absolute sick as dogs. And uh, we flew back and we, and we just, uh, we got an interesting email by saying thanks for the presentation. Um, we we you know, really appreciated some of the thinking. We didn't understand a lot of what you said because <laughs> they were Spanish and apparently they didn't have translators in the room and we didn't know this. <laughs> and also you didn't seem to have a lot of energy. So. <laughs> um, if you had a magic wand and I could grant you a wish, um, is there anything you'd change about the industry? I... Uh, I'd like us to be more confident. I think we have this veneer of confidence. You know, I think it's a bit of a bit of a sham. But you know, clients sort of come to us and they say, you, you know, you're, you're you're too expensive, and yeah. we all do. We all do this. We all then drop our drop our rates or we drop our, our price. And I think if we were all more confident, we'd all be better or make more money with clients. Yeah. And part of the problem is that we all talk about being confident and not doing it, but we all actually do it. It's a bit like uh, managers in football who get annoyed when someone taps up their players but goes off and does it himself. Yeah. And I think if we were more confident and maybe work together a bit more, 
if you look at the law industry, you work off rates and hours built. You know, it's about just being confident with, with the client, and I think we can work together to do that. Right, quick fire rounds. Uh, favourite current brand? Adidas. All time fave? Aldi. Double espresso or green tea? Builders tea. <laughs> brightest person you've worked with? Uh, brightest person I've worked with? Probably Jim Carroll, who's chairman of BDH. Most creative person you've worked with? <sighs> Could upset some people here. Apart from Madison and Lennox, our, our executive creative director. Uh, funny enough, there's a planner I used to work with years ago called Johnny Shaw. He's okay. now a planner out in, in Japan. Yeah. Just, it was a young planner and he was, he was just brilliant, bubbling with ideas and creativity. Independent or network? Uh, network. Money or happiness? Happiness every time. Twist or stick? Uh, depends on where I am in the career. <laughs> stick. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin.